when I was asked to join Self Help Graphics, you know, this was, if you remember, the summer of 2005, Self Help Graphics closes in June. And then there's a community meeting at Avenue 50, over 200 people. The place can't possibly hold everybody that's there. Uh, and there's this discussion about, you know, with the board there and so forth. And um, it's clear that the board had lost control, had lost legitimacy, essentially. Um, and, um, and they weren't going to get that back from, from the community. Uh, so they had to go. Um, and so Sean Noriega, Max Benavides, and other people are looking around for who can help, you know, bring this back. Um, and so they asked me if I would, if I would join the board. And um, I knew that it was in debt. I knew there was going to be a lot of problems. I knew there was going to be a lot of trouble, in a sense, you know, and that I should not do it. Okay. Um, if I were, if, if a client would have asked me, my legal advice would have been, no, do not do it. Uh, you, you're gonna, you, you're, you're gonna be liable for debt. You know, you're gonna, you're probably not gonna make very many friends. At the end of it, you're gonna be exhausted. Um, and you might even wonder what, why the hell you did it, okay? Uh, so don't do it. That would have been my advice to anybody who would have asked me. Um, and, um, and of course, I thought about all those things. Uh, my kids told me, Dad, you got to do it. If you don't go in, if you don't do it, it self-help graphics will die. And of course, I'd always taken my kids to this, so they, they knew all about self-help and they loved it, loved the place. And, but that's what they told me, if you don't do it, you know, and so that's why I did it, you know, because my, against my better reason, I decided to do it. So I joined the board in September of 2005. Um, I was told the debt was somewhere between sixty and $75,000. Um, inside about three months, it became clear that the debt was $150,000. Um, and, um, and that nobody wanted to join the board. You know, because then I thought, well, I get some, some of my friends who have some access, some you know, either either money or, or access to money, access to resources to join the board. Nobody wanted to join the board. You know, it was in trouble. It was all this, well, you know, everything else. You know, issues. Uh, uh, luckily, there was never any issue of fraud. You know, um, but nonetheless, nobody wanted to join the board. So that was out. You know, as, as a, so I got to do this myself, kind of thing. Uh, we did get some help from uh, community, California Community Foundation and some other people, but that money wasn't going to last very long. Um, so it became clear that the solution to... And, and I told, told them that I would join the board uh, on the condition that I would only be there 36 months, for three years. I'd give a, a finite period of time. Um, my idea has always been with organizations is that you come in with a certain amount of time you will either accomplish something and you should leave or you have accomplished nothing and you should leave okay I um, broke down the time periods I looked at it as a boxing match I'm gonna go 15 rounds I'm gonna go the whole at the end of, 60, uh, of 36 months I'm gonna feel like I've been in a 15 round okay and I broke down the, the kind of the periods of steps as rounds. And I, you know, and I was, I was um, scoring myself. How did I do in the first round? How did I do in the second round? You know, I took a couple of hits in the third round. Then I, that kind of, as I was going along, I was, you know, gauging myself that way. Um, but my goal was to get out of, out, out of uh, financial um, uh, problems, to stabilize it, um, hopefully to do something about the building. Um, and to safeguard its reputation. Um, but the place was in chaos. I mean, literally, um, we just, uh, we, when we got there, um, there was a lot of mail that had been unopened. Had been open for more than the place had been closed. I mean, even before the place officially closed, people hadn't opened mail. Uh, we found checks. For example, you know, not a lot, but but I mean, even that, you know, I mean, gee, you could have used the money, right? <laughs> but uh, um, so, I mean, everything was in disarray because months had gone on. Um, people, self-help had missed deadlines to 
for, for new grant proposals, you know, hadn't complied with grant you know, requirements for the existing grants that it ha did have, so now it was out of compliance and, you know, was, nobody's going to give you money for that, you know, because of that also. Um, and so, you know, all the way around, it was, it was problematic. I decided that there, oh, and then we did hire a, an interim executive director who worked for a while, but then, you know, was more interested in his own musical career, so for so there was problems there. So I decided there was only one way to, I was going to be able to do this, and that's to really take the reins and really spend the real time. And it became my practically my full-time job for the last 18 months or so. Um, but I decided that uh, I had to go back to the root, which was the prints. The, 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 the production of quality prints was the core of self help graphics and the bringing of the artist to do all of that. Um, and that th that we had to start from there and expand out and that I would use the same concept that I had used before um, with Artes de Mexico Festival which was the in-kind income, the volunteers and then with self-help, the earned income because the, the good thing about self-help versus some of the other centers is that had the, the prints are a source of earned income, of real income um, so Got Joe, our master printer, sat him down and said, Joe, I need to know how much you need in terms of paint and uh, inks and uh, materials and paper and bags for the next six months. Because we're going we're gonna to fashion a print thing, but I want to make sure you got enough materials for the next six months until we get this going. Okay, so he told me, I need this. I said, okay, got that funded, you know, paid for that. Um, we did the first audit. The self help had ever done. I um, got the accountant um, um, committed to paying him eleven thousand dollars for the audit um, without any money for it. Um, got a um, an, an attorney who specializes in nonprofits to redo the bylaws of self help because they had basically had used the same boilerplate bylaws that you know that, that they had since nineteen seventy eight. Um, nobody had ever updated anything on that. Um, I got that, you know, um, got committed myself to that. And then I went to Antonio Hernandez and said, I've done these things, now I'd like you to pay for them. And she said, okay, I'll go. Okay? But that's how I was running it, was the idea was, don't wait for a grant, do it. The money will come. If you do it, you'll figure that part of it out. But you've got to stabilize the organization, and you have to show that, you know, that you're you're serious about what you're doing. And structurally, you know, the audit was important. Luckily, again, it revealed there was no malfeasance. There was no issues about somebody stole twenty thousand dollars, or you know, no, no money was really missing. Okay, that was not a problem. Um, but it, it it made clear that we owed one hundred fifty thousand dollars. Okay, and uh, and then the the bylaws we got all of that done, you know, uh, um, and so forth, and um, got that all paid for. So now we have done the two structural, stru structurally important things, um, and then the third was of course the, the printing.